Hi there, welcome back. Obviously, we're still on the Benley build. Uh, we're getting quite involved now. These fairings, uh, they do take a while to do. Um, I've done a couple of bits since uh, we were last filming, uh, only minor. Uh, we filmed doing this fort leg, just giving it a lick over on the mop to make it sort of presentable. It's not custom show level, uh, but I think it's in keeping with the rest of the bike. Uh, you know, when we tidied it up a bit more with new exhaust and stuff, I think that'll look great. So uh, I've done the other leg, exactly the same, um, fitted the gaiters. Um, I had a mock up with this uh, bracket, uh, just held it up to the bike, and I noticed that this fort leg was, oh, it was probably just going to touch it here when it's on the bike. So I had a closer look, and there was a slight bit of a lump missing out of the lock stop. Now the lock stop is when you turn the bars, that's what stops it to stop everything going right the way around. Uh, and that one was going just a little bit too far. So I inspected this lock stop on the frame here uh, and it had a little lump out of it. So I put the wheel back in, uh, took it to my mate Jay and he just tack welded a little bit on there so that that stops in the right place. Now I'll touch that in with a bit of black frame paint. Um, I use black paint for raw iron gates because it can go straight on, you don't have to prime it. Um, so look, so we've got two fault legs in. Uh, Basically, the run of play now is get the mud guard on, get the wheel in. Before I put the wheel in, I'm just going to clean the brake shoes with some brake cleaner. Nothing massive. The brake shoes are very worn. They are going to be replaced. But look, while the wheel's off, just give it a clean and get the old dust out. Um, uh, get that all back together and then start fitting the frame. So, right, it's mud guard time. Straighten these up. You only have to be near with this. You can just bend this in a little bit. Say that. There we go. Line up the holes, and then when you're doing this, uh, make sure you get the right bolt. These are the short ones in the fork legs. Um, just get there's six mounting bolts. Just sort of get them all in finger tight if you can. Um, see how we go. You don't need to put mega on these, they're into alloy. So and what I will do is before I nip the spindle up, I'll bounce on the front end just to check if everything's in alignment. <coughs> Right, that's that done. Next, uh, put the cables in. Uh, I'll probably get this the wrong way. I think that one goes in first. That's the speedo drive cable. Then you can push that to the back. And then you can get this one in, which is the front brake actuating cable. Uh, I think that's how it's going to go. We'll see, those might be the wrong way around. I might have to take those out again. Um, Next, uh, right wheel. Um, it, right, here's the front wheel, it's going back in the bike, but first, because it's out, I'm just going to give it a quick wipe down with some brake cleaner. So just pull the spindle out, chuck that in your tray. Uh, I've already copper slipped that, so that's ready to go back in. Um, it is quite filthy, look. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of brake cleaner. I'm not going to go too mad with this because uh, we're going to be doing all this later. We're actually going to lay some new wheels. I've got new hubs and rims with the bike, if you remember. So, um, just going to get the worst off these. I'm not too fussed, really. But look, while it's off, when I rode it on the first ride out, um, it was squeaking a bit. And sometimes, not always, but sometimes that can just be built up with dust on it. So I'm just giving it a wipe down just to get any dust off this. But as I say, down the line, all these shoes will be coming out. These are very worn. Uh, they are still legal and working, but we'll put some new ones in when we put the lace the new wheels. But for the time being, for our test rides, this is fine. I mean, look at that, it's filthy. Uh, look, down the line, we'll give this a proper, proper clean, but um, 
Uh, I haven't got brake shoes at the moment, so we will revisit that. All this lot will be off uh, again. So you've got the Speedo drive gear, those two tangs there. They've got to sort of line up with the notches on the hub so that you don't bend them. So. I'm just checking when I do that that the speedo drive gear in there is turning, which it is, it's, that means it's located. Right, there we go. So now, uh, that goes this side. We'll just pop that back in. Right, before you try and actually locate it. That goes in. I've already greased that just so it's not dry against that seal. Stick that in there and it'll stay there on its own, but don't have it protruding through or you won't be able to get the wind. And then you've got to line up the brake plate with the lug on the frame here. Because that's what stops it spinning when you put the brake on. Right, so let's see, we can kind of let go of that for a minute. We'll just lightly tap it, spin the wheel to seat the drive gear. Now the nut. Just put that in finger tight. You don't need to do anything up tight at the moment because when you tighten the spindle, first of all I want to bounce on the forks, um, uh, and then when you tighten the spindle you need to squeeze the front brake lever and that centres the shoes, uh, which is it's just good practice. It's not absolutely critical, but it is good if you can. Uh, right, that's the front end on and back. I love these gaiters. I think they're going to look really good when the fairing's on. Uh, it needs a final check over of bouncing on it to seat it all and nipping it all up but it's good enough just to start doing the fairing which I am excited about. It's taken quite a while to get to this stage with the welding and the wiring off and the polishing the forks and anyway so look we're at a stage to start fitting the fairing. Now we've got these uh, which were the bits I was missing that took all the sort of like messages trying to find out from the guy I bought the fairing off anyway he found them. Uh, and they slot on here. He thought these were welded to the frame, so he thought they were part of the frame. So that just sits in there somehow. The rubber goes over, and then when the tank's on, that holds that there, and this can pivot, but it's only taking the weight at the front. It's Jubilee clipped around here, so that's that side. I'll put the same on the other side. It's just a mirror image of that one. Uh, same thing, goes over the lug, push the rubber on. I know what's going to happen here, one of these rubbers is going to fall off while I'm working on it and when it comes to put the fairing on I won't be able to find it and this workshop's on a slope, anything like that, that could end up right down the other end and the amount of times I've had a socket go miles in here, uh, I found it about two weeks later, I gave up looking for it, um, hang on, so this goes on there, let me just get some bolts in my hand, once I've got one on, um, again same old trick, just get everything on loose. Don't do one bolt up and then try and get the others in. Always just get the mounting bolts in, if you can. Um, I know that goes on the frame there-ish. Get on there. Can't get in there. These are nylock nuts, so I don't think this goes all the way up against that. I think it's, I've got a feeling, I don't know. Right, that's just finger tight until it's hit the nylock. I'll put that on the frame. Um, I've got a Jubilee clip on here already anyway. Let's put that on. Uh, now I've forgotten my spanner. So just nip this up. Again, it's only just to hold it on at the moment. It's not going to... Right, so that's just gripping. It's not properly tightened. 
Uh, then I've got the other side, which I need the nut and bolt for. So this one is the same, exactly the same. It's a mirror image of that one. Right. So I know they're in the same amount because the nylon's just grippy. So I can sort of try and tighten them up equally, which hopefully means this will all go in the right place. And also the other thing I've got here is always useful, I have a rubber mallet just to tap it and... <coughs> so I'm just going to look how we're doing. Right, there's a pad here, a metal one, that's got to be up against the frame. If you look through, you can just see a bit of daylight there. Um, I'm not exactly sure how high this goes, um, but, well, I don't think that's bad really. I think, well, I'm looking to see this is parallel with this, so I would say if that was there, I think we're okay. I'll turn the handlebars when it's bolted up and check. Obviously, mega important that this has got clearance on these or it's going to jam your steering. Um. But that is pretty solid. That's not waggling around at all. I could nip them up a tiny bit tighter, maybe, but for the moment, uh, that's fine. I'm just gonna, now I'm going to check the lock stops, either when the steering's fully round, it's not contacting anything. And you can see that's clear there. There's a bit of daylight there. So you don't want that hitting that. Because, I, because I've not had one of these and fitted one of these before, uh, I'm just being really careful. I don't want anything to foul. And I don't exactly know the height. You know, you could move this up or down uh, a little bit on these brackets because they swivel. Um, I think that's fine. Right, that's okay. So now, uh, I suppose now, I'll put this thing on. Um, now I think, if you look at this, it's bowed downwards. A bit like a delta wing. Uh, I think they do go down, or that I don't know. So we could be taking this on and off a few times. bit of rubber to protect the frame. All this came with it. The guy was great. Uh, and also another thing I've done, I've, uh, t because obviously this is, there's a lot of room for error here. Um, all th this is as he gave it to me, uh, but I've put tape on it and those ta that tape is equal from either end so that as long as these metal bits are the same distance from the tape, that should be in the middle to align the fairing. Uh, you don't have to do that, but I just did it so I have got a reference point if I need it. Right, so that's in there loosely. Put a washer on. Uh, the nuts that were on it weren't nylocks, so I am going to put some nylocks on. Uh, because then if it rattles slightly loose, it won't completely come undone and fall off, in theory. Uh, but no, they're pretty good. So, um, and again, I'm just going to do this up so I can move it if I tap it with a mallet. So I'm not going to murder these up until I actually offer up the fairing. And I'm hoping the new fairing does fit it. You know, that otherwise I'll have to put the slightly scabbier one on. Now look, there's a lot of room for error with this, height-wise, spinning around the frame, um, which can be to your advantage when you're trying to fit it, but it can be a bit of a pig to get it actually in the right place first time. So I expect we'll have to mess with this. You've also got the rotation of this that you can mess with uh, to align it. So we'll just, I think what I'll do is I'll, when I go to fit the fiberglass, I'll get, bolt it on at the top and then leave this loose enough to maneuver it. I think that's the only way to do it. Um, so next, I'm going to mount, this goes on here though. Uh, but obviously, all this wiring's got to go in that hole and in that hole. Now, I've noticed, and I'm just making this up, as I, as I keep saying, I don't know these bikes inside out. Uh, this lot seems to come in from the top. So, uh, let's try and untangle it. Oh, there we go. So, I'd imagine all this lot goes in the big hole at the top. Uh, and this lot 
goes in at the bottom. But the problem we've got is this headlamp is quite a bit further forward than the little one that's sat in there. And I'm not exactly sure how easily all this is going to reach. And I certainly don't want to be extending this lot. So um, to begin with, I'll just put this lot in the bottom and that lot in the top and put it on and at least the shell will be in the right place. I've already put spacers on this uh, and made sure that this sits on, on the bolts okay. So in theory, this lot should go in the bottom and I'll chuck it in now while I can manoeuvre it around. It doesn't matter about it being in the right order at this point because you can always take a wire out and out the back and redo it. Just, just try and stuff this lot in here now. I'm hoping that most of it will go back inside. Right, so um, we've got the headlamp rigidly mounted. Um, there's two clusters of wires here, one from the top and one from the main loom here, which some of which I've put in the bottom. I couldn't put it all in the bottom and loop it up because this is further forward. If you were gonna do that to get all this inside, which I might do down the line again, Sounds like I'm putting a lot of stuff off, but I just want to get this fairing on and ride it and see what it's like, how it affects handling, etc. Uh, so, look, I've reconnected the big blocks that are inside. I've got uh, earth wires and things still loose, which I can't do now because I need to put the fairing on to see where the indicators end up exactly so I can cut the wires to length. So I won't put the glass in, so I can still work on this and run the indicator wires in and stuff uh, when the fairing's on. So... There's this big lot back here, which I have cable tied together to keep it neat, um, but there's two big block connectors here, which normally would be in the headlight. Um, but just for now, that's fine. I can get the fairing on and then look at this and sort it all out um, so it's a bit more waterproof. I might wrap it in something or I might get a, a sealed box. But basically, I just want to get the fairing on, check all the electrics work, run all the indicator wires in. I've also got to rewire the headlamp because this was 12 volt, the one uh, that it came off. I've got a 6 volt bulb, but it's not a bayonet fitting. It's an H4 type fitting with the flat spade connectors. So I've got to wire that into the headlamp wiring. But I could do all that with the fairing on. So next, hurrah, uh, finally, uh, we're ready to kind of start working on the fairing. So round here, here's our fairing. Um, we've got two, as you can remember. This one is the one that came with the bracketry, but I think this one's neater. So I am going to have a go with this. I don't know if this one fits. Um, but there's one issue I've got to deal with first. This trim that goes round the edge, uh, this has got a metal core in it, and it grips this quite well. But when it gets old, it gets brittle, and it shrinks. And look, at, that's why it's come off there. That's a shorter distance. So I've done the other side. It was exactly the same. Uh, look, and that's quite neat and tidy, but what I've had to do, um, uh, let me hold it so you can see it, uh, in there, look, this is riveted on at the end, that's all that holds that on, because it's got the metal core to grip it, uh, so on this side, I drilled the rivet out, pushed it back on, and of course it's, well, an inch shorter, so I re-drilled the hole, uh, and riveted it on. I just want to do the same to this because you can't do that with it on and I, I don't want to keep taking this on and off. I know it's going to come off a couple more times, probably, doing the wiring. So let's get that done first and then I think we're ready. Oh no, no we're not. I've got to put the screen on because I think getting at these with all the clocks in the way, these mounting holes for the screen. So uh, I'm going to do the trim, do the screen. I've put a bit of 2 mil neoprene on here. Uh, I'm hoping... I've ridden bikes before where the screen kind of squeaks when it's vibrating going along. Hopefully, it might make it worse. I think it'll make it better. So that was just self-adhesive. I cleaned it off, degreased it, stuck that on. Uh, these two channels here, when that's on the bike, this dips and it fills up with water. So those are drain holes to let the water out so you don't get a quarter of an inch of water in there. Um, uh, and also the other thing, with the wiring that's out of the headlamp, I'm hoping that because it's behind a fairing, well, it's a bit like being in the headlamp shell anyway. So I might not have to get too particular about wrapping that stuff. We'll see how it goes. If, it, if I'm riding it in the rain and it starts messing about, uh, then I will have to insulate that. But just to get it on the road for now, screen on, trim on, and let's offer it up. Right, before we do our first trial fitting uh, with this fairing, which I say is an unknown quantity at the moment, uh, I'm just going to try and repair this. Uh, I've done this side already and that worked well. My, my big issue is with doing the big danger 
is that drilling the rivet out, one trying to get the little bit that's left over out, uh, and then when you put the new one in, obviously it's got to go quite a lot of tension before it snaps. And I just hope I don't crack it. If I do, I can deal with it, uh, but I just hope I don't. So. Right, the head's come off that. And I think if I just keep going gently. Well, I think the trim will come off that now, hopefully. Because the rivet doesn't go right the way through to the outside, it only goes through the fiberglass. So the bit that squashes up is on the outside underneath the trim. So I'm just going to see. There we go, that's come off. Uh, you know what, I could leave that in, because <sighs> obviously this fairing needs a clean inside, but we're not doing that at the moment, um, because there's no point cleaning it if it doesn't actually fit. Uh, so then, now this stuff has got a metal core in it and it grips, but look, it's a bit misshapen in places. In fact, I'm just going to go and get a big set of grips, because I needed that on the other one. Uh, I am going to heat it just a tiny bit, it might just help me to make it a bit more pliable. Once I've got this on so I'm happy, I'll mark it uh, and then I'll pull it off again, drill it and then rivet it. I'll think about it there. Hopefully it won't split it. Right, so I centre punched it, so hopefully a little drill will follow the centre punch line. I'll try and get as parallel as I can. I can't get it completely parallel. Just go steady, there we go. Right, eventually I've got that in there. That has been a bit of a battle. So rest that on the floor. You have to push it down hard. I'm just going to check that's on OK. Yeah, that, oh, there we go. That's it, that's better. about this cracking it. I'm trying to go st real steady. There we go. So there's the big shaft that compressed it out. And there's the rivet in there. Next, we're going to fit the screen. I think these, oh, <laughs> look at that. that's an add-on that the previous owner did, but actually I quite like it. It finishes it quite nicely. Uh, and it spreads the load. Uh, I think this may have been for a police thing, but I'm not sure. Um, standard ones didn't have that. Uh, so now, this should just line up on the holes that are already pre-drilled. I've put that neoprene on. Um, so I've just got to, where's the hole? I can't see what I'm doing. There's it. Back there, so clear. Now, I'm going to put these in. I think the thing to do is just get the nuts on and don't do it too tight. Got nylocks on these, so again, you don't have to murder it up. So hopefully I don't crack this. This is the big danger here. But I... Oh, that needs to come up. You know what? I'm going to lean this on the bench. I think it'd be easier than working down there. This thing's really awkward to work on, especially on your own. It's just squashing the neoprene on it now, which is good. I just hope it doesn't squeak. I've had these that squeak terribly every time you hit a bump in the road.
There we go. Ready for business. The trim's on, screen's on. We're going to do the indicators later uh, and we'll have to sort out the wiring and the headlamp wiring and tidy up the main loom on the bike. But I'm happy with that. I think we're kind of ready to try and have a sample fitting. Right, now, uh, back at the bike. Look, we're getting there. It's starting to look the part. Um, we're going to offer this fairing up for the very first time. I have not offered this one up, but trying to fit the other one, which is here. Um, these sort of cheeks down below, uh, well, they're narrower than they thought, so you, you have to kind of manipulate it round. So now I've polished these forks, I'm actually a little bit more precious about them, so I'm just going to put a bit of that. It might help. Look, it might go straight through that as well if I catch it. Um, but at least if I do that, I think, I'll think, well, I did do, try and do what I could. Uh, I'll put another one over the middle. Uh, it doesn't matter if it comes off when you're doing it. It's just to try and save me marking those forks again. Um, I know they're not beautifully polished, but I would prefer to try and keep them like they are. It's like anything, though. If you get it wrong, like say I do mark this now. Well, down the line, when I'm doing the brake shoes, I'll take that front fork out and polish it again. It's, you know, it's not a disaster. It's a pain, and you be annoyed with yourself, but it's not a disaster. We're getting a bit rowdy next door, but we're going to crack on. Just ignore that. Right, there we go. A little bit of masking tape for what it's worth. Um, let's take these off. I won't get very far with those on. I don't know if this is in the right place. Uh, this, I think, is right, but I don't know. You know, there is room for manoeuvre with all this stuff. That could go up a tiny bit, not much actually, because of the brackets. I don't want this bracket over the chassis plate if I can avoid it. Uh, and I don't think that will be any really good. Right, there's those. That's kind of all right. Now, the battle begin. I know these don't like going around these ports. I think what I tend to do is get one on. probably say take the forks out. Oh, I'm not going to. Oh, that was, oh, I've, had, I've caught the masking tape and it's rucked up, so that will have marked the forks. I'm not going to get stressed about it. Have no crack the fairing. There it comes. Just going to put them on loose, just so it can't fall off. Really, so, well, this, this might have to come off again to align the headlamp sideways. When you're ready. Look, the fairing fits. It's great. It's a little bit scabby. We've got to put mirrors on. Uh, we've got to do a bit of wiring. Uh, I just can't wait to ride it, but. Uh, join us again next time and I'll be persevering uh, with hopefully getting it nearer ready to have a test ride and see what it's like, see if it makes it weave. I hope it's not too windy.